Welcome to another Ziva Math video. In this video, we will learn about multiplying with decimals. If you're ready with paper and pencil, let's get started. For our first example, we have 2 and 81 hundredths times 3 and 5 tenths. And as you can see, I did not line up my decimal when I set up the problem. You don't need to line up decimals when you're multiplying. That's only for adding and subtracting. So I'm going to think more about lining up my digits than lining up the decimals. The next thing you might want to do if you're still new to multiplication is circle the numbers that you're going to be multiplying first. I'm still going to start on the right and multiply everything by the 5 first. So if outlining that helps you, go ahead and do that. So my first step will be 5 times 1, which is 5. Then I'll have 8 times 5, which is 40. I'll carry the 4. I'll have 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 4 more is 14. And notice I've not done anything with the decimals yet. I'm going to multiply as if the decimals aren't even in my problem. So I've used the 4, I've used the 5, so I'm going to cross that out. I'm also going to drop my 0 here before starting to multiply everything by the 3. So then just like with whole numbers, I'm going to start with the 3, and I'm going to multiply 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3, then I'll do 3 times 8, which is 24. So I'll place the 4, and then I'll carry the 2, and I'll have 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. And again, I'm not going to do anything with my decimal yet. I'm going to go ahead and add, just like if I were multiplying whole numbers. So I have 5 plus 0 is 5. 0 plus 3 is 3. 4 plus 4 is 8. And 1 plus 8 is 9. Now that I've multiplied everything, it's time to place my decimal. To do that, I need to count how many places are behind the decimal in my problem. So in 2 and 81 hundredths, there's two digits behind the decimal. In 3 and 5 tenths, there's one digit. And so there's three digits all together behind a decimal point in my problem. So to place my decimal in my product, I'm going to think about this as being a whole number, placing my decimal behind the 5, and then moving it the 3 places to the left. So my final answer will be 9 and 835 thousandths. Our next example, we have 16 and 8 tenths times 7 hundredths. So we're multiplying by a factor that is less than 1. Our steps aren't going to change, though. We're going to set up our problem, not worrying about where the decimal points are. We don't need to line them up. That's only for addition and subtraction. We're going to set these problems up so we can just worry about the digits in them because we're going to multiply as if we were multiplying by whole numbers. So the first thing you may want to do if you're new to multiplication is circle what you're going to be multiplying first. And first we're going to be multiplying everything by the 7. So we'll start with 8 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56. So we'll place the 6 and we'll carry our 5. Then we'll be at 7 times 6 plus the 5. 7 times 6 is 42 plus 5 is 47. So our 7 goes here. We'll carry the 4. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 4 is 11. And we really could stop here with our multiplication steps because after this we'll be multiplying everything by 0. But to show you how that'll work, we'll go one more line and multiply by that first 0. So I would cross out everything that I've used, the 4, the 5, and the 7. I'll drop my 0 here. And then for the next line, we'll be multiplying everything by 0. So 0 times 8 is 0, 0 times 6 is 0, and 0 times 1 is 0. As you can see, we get a row of zeros. So I'm not going to multiply by that next 0 because I'm going to just get another row of zeros here. So let's go ahead and add 6 plus 0 is 6, 7 plus 0 is 7, 
1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 0 is 1. Now we need to place our decimal in our product, and to do that, I'm going to count the digits behind the decimal in both factors. So there's one digit behind the decimal in 16 and 8 tenths, and two digits behind the decimal in 7 hundredths for a total of three digits. So I'm going to need to move my decimal point in my answer three places to the left. So my product will be 1 and 176 thousandths. Our next example, we have 6 and 7 tenths times 8 and 3 tenths. And we've talked about how we don't need to line up our decimal point when multiplying. But in this example, it looks like we did. Well, that's only because we have the same number of digits in front of and behind the decimal in both of our factors. So because the decimal point is in the same place in those factors, it only just happens to line up when we set this problem up. The next thing you may want to do is to circle the numbers that we're going to be using first. We're going to multiply as if the decimal points weren't even there, starting on the right by multiplying everything by 3. The 3 times 7 is 21. Place the 1, carry the 2. 6 times 3 is 18, plus the 2 is 20. Then I can cross out the numbers that I've already used. I've used the 2 and I've used the 3. And I'm going to need to place a zero on the next line to get me started. And then just like when we multiply with whole numbers, we'll start with the 8. 8 times 7 is 56. Then we have 8 times 6 is 48 plus the 5 is 53. Then we'll be ready to add just like we did if we were multiplying with whole numbers. So when I add, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 6 is 6, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 5 plus 0 is 5. And then I need to place my decimal point. Well, I need to count how many places are behind the decimal in my two factors. There's 1 and 6 and 7 tenths, and there's 1 and 8 and 3 tenths. So there's two digits total behind a decimal place in my factors. And so I'm going to need to move the decimal in my answer two places to the left. So we start by placing the decimal behind the 1, and we're going to move it two places to the left. So my final answer, my product, is 55 and 61 hundredths. For this example, we have 4 and 2 tenths times 8 and 5 hundredths. And we've talked about how we don't need to line up the decimals when multiplying, but we do need to think about how we're lining up the digits. And one thing to think about with this problem is that commutative property of multiplication, which says that 2 times 3 is 6 and 3 times 2 is also 6, which means when we go to line up this problem, we can take the 8 and 5 hundredths and we can put that on top and then multiply it by the 4 and 2 tenths because it doesn't matter what order we place our numbers in and we don't need to line up the decimal point. We can just start multiplying. Now, if you want to continue to circle the numbers we're going to use first, go ahead and do that. This problem, I'm going to work without that in here. I'm still going to start with the 2 because we're going to multiply as if the decimals weren't even there. 5 times 2 is 10. I'll carry the 1. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and 2 times 8 is 16. Then I've used the 1 already. I can cross it out. I've used the 2. I'm done with it. Then I need to place a 0 in my next line to get started. Then I will have 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20. Placing my 0 and carrying the 2. 4 times 0 is 0, plus the 2 is 2, and then 4 times 8 is 32. Then I'll be ready to add. And when I add, I'll start on the right with 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, 6 plus 2 is 8, 
2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 plus 0 is 3. And I will take the same steps to place the decimal in my answer, looking at how many places are behind the decimal in both of my factors. So in 8 and 5 hundredths, there's 2, and 4 and 2 tenths, there's 1. So there's a total of 3. So in my product, I'll be moving the decimal 3 places to the left. So I'll have a product of... 33 and 81 hundredths, because remember that zero at the end, because it's behind the decimal place and at the very end, I don't actually need it in my product. So 33 and 81 hundredths is my final answer. For our final example, we have 53 times 1 and 2 tenths, so a whole number times a decimal. We're going to work this problem exactly the same way, setting it up, not worrying about lining up the decimal because we don't have to do that when we multiply. If you want to circle the numbers we're going to use to multiply with first, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do this example that way, but we are still going to start on the right, multiplying exactly as we would with whole numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 2 is 10. Then my next step would be to drop a 0 to start my second line of multiplication, and then 1 times 3 is 3, and 5 times 1 is 5. And then just like if we were multiplying with whole numbers, we would go ahead and add. When I add, I have 6 plus 0 is 6, 0 plus 3 is 3, and 5 plus 1 is 6. And then my last step is I need to place my decimal in my product. I'm going to count the number of digits behind the decimal in my factor. So there's only one. So I only need to move my decimal point one place to the left to place it in my product. So my final answer is 63 and 6 tenths. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.